Morning, lovely church family, and welcome to morning prayers on Monday. Morning, Reverend Dave. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Barbara. Morning, and you're in a different position today. Well, I am. Yes, I just thought to try this because um, practically for reasons of signal, but it seems to be um, better anyway. Now that um, I'm sat in this comfortable armchair this morning. And um, maybe my box will be bigger than usual because sometimes I I I um, I change size, I shrink, then I expand, and um, hopefully I'll be the same size today and be consistent. Barbara, um, 
The next three days are a special season in the church calendar. Now, um, what is it called? Just remind me, Barbara. I've got a picture to name? show everybody. It's called Rogation Day for the next three days. Could you tell us a bit That's... about that? I could tell 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 you a little bit. It comes from the tradition at this time of year that um, people would leave the church, they'd have a service in the church, they walk out of the church and um, into the local fields. Um, comes from the traditions, you know, before the Industrial Revolution when virtually everybody lived in the countryside and villages, and it was to ask for God's blessing on the harvest to come for the coming year. It was also to ask um, God's blessing and protection from disaster and danger. And um, rogation comes from the Latin rogare, which means to ask. So it was a way of just acknowledging that um, everything that we have, we, we, we receive as a gift from God and we depend on, on God. So it was, I guess, a, a nice thing to do and a vital thing to do because, you know, if, if you don't get the harvest, you have, you have no food to eat. And um, I think these days is probably not remembered so much because we're much more on the whole in terms of population. We have big urban centres and we're a bit detached from the countryside. But it's just a reminder that the crops that we have and everything that we have, our health, our safety, our, our welfare, all comes from God. And it was to ask God for his blessing for the coming year. I think that's been quite noticeable when we've um, had a shortage of people that are able to do the food harvest recently. Yes, yes. And it, and that's one of the things where you think, actually, the, 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 there's, there's work um, and not enough people to do the work. But we're still thankful. We are. So thank we you are. for telling us that. Now, we'll just move through to our liturgy. Today, we're yeah. going to be reading the second psalm because there's two psalms. We're going to be reading the second psalm and the New Testament read. So we just still our hearts as we begin our worship this morning and we focus on the reason why we're here and that is our thoughts turn to our Lord. O oh Lord, open our lips. And thy mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ. Let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourself therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. We say yes. together glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. 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 And moving down to the second psalm, Psalm 67. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. In the face of Jesus Christ, your light and glory have blazed forth. O God of all the nations, with all your people, may we, may, may we make known your grace and walk in the ways of peace. For your name's sake. We say together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We continue our service with the song of Moses and Miriam. If you join me with the bold type, and then Barbara will read the rest of the, the text. Your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise. The God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. We say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading, um, which Reverend Dave's going to talk on, is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love them, those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give, will be the measure you This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we ask for your wisdom as we consider your words this morning and how they apply to our lives. Lord, we ask in that mighty name, the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Well, well um, I'm so pleased. At least it's um, an easy passage of scripture today. Um, nothing, nothing difficult whatsoever in that passage, is there, from the teaching of Jesus. And um, I'm glad you're able to, to join me as well. Now that I'm outside um, St. Paul's Cathedral, just stood outside there, you know, with, with that wonderful backdrop. And um, there we are. What, what a beautiful, I iconic um, cathedral. And um, I, I would guess that many, most people in, in, in this country, if you show them a picture of um, St. Paul's Cathedral, would, would, would know where it is immediately. And not just people in this country, but people around the world. Such an iconic building. And I love... I love church architecture. I love some of the medieval buildings. Um, St. Paul's, you know, it, that beautiful design from Christopher Wren. Not his original design, but nonetheless, you know, it came out of the, um, the ashes of the Great Fire of London when after the old St. Paul's had been burnt to the ground. But I do love some of um, our old architecture and looking at the heritage that we have in this country with the cathedrals, and with some of the parish churches. However, we must never mistake the beauty of these buildings with what is the essence of the real church. And the real church is the people. If there's no people in the cathedrals, if there's no people in the churches, then that they're just buildings. And we know through this lockdown that actually the essence of the church is the people because we've continued to function as a church because the essence of the church is that we're united together by and in the Holy Spirit. We can still pray together. We can still share God's word together. We can still witness to our friends and our neighbours, albeit with perhaps limited ability than we've had for, well, I think in living memory. For, for any of us. So we know things have been different, uh, but, but the church continues to be the church. And just whilst um, we're on that, one or two people perhaps have got confusion messages about when the church is going to be open. The latest I have is that they're aiming for the 4th of July, but not for a church service. And, and the 4th of July is just a working date at the moment. And that may be just to open the church for some private prayer for a limited number of people because at the moment we have no details whatsoever. It's still a work in progress. So if the building's not the essence of the church, what is? Well, it is being that witness to Jesus Christ. And we look at today's reading from the gospel and you think, is, is Jesus asking us to be doormats? Is he just asking us to roll over and just take whatever is given to us. No, I don't believe he is at all. But he is challenging the hypocrisy and perhaps the limited vision that some people had about the law of Moses. That some people in the Gospels come to Jesus and they're um, looking for a favourable answer from Jesus to say, Lord, you know, uh, I've kept all these commandments since I was a boy. But actually, nobody ever fully kept the commandments. And sometimes there were people in the society in which Jesus lived who thought that the law of Moses and being kind and loving to your neighbour and loving your neighbour as yourself only applied to fellow Jews. Love your neighbour as yourself was OK as long as it was within the community of Israel, but it didn't apply to those Gentiles or those Greeks or those foreigners because obviously the blessings of God are just for the community of Israel. Well, nothing could be further from the truth because every single person is made in the image of God. And for those who were complacent, who thought they were obeying the law of Moses and being good to their neighbours, Jesus actually stretches their, their imaginations and, and their limited vision further. And what we see in this passage is Jesus putting before us his own attitude. And his own attitude is this, that he comes to forgive those who don't deserve to be forgiven. 
He comes to serve those. And sometimes the people he serves will be ungrateful. I've often wondered to myself, on the day when the crowd gather, when Jesus is put on trial before Pontius Pilate, and, and Pilate brings him out to the crowd and, and, and he says, what shall I do with um, Jesus, the Nazarene? And the crowd shout, crucify, crucify, crucify. I've often wondered how many people in that crowd were people that Jesus had ministered to. I don't know the answer, but I suspect some people in that crowd benefited from the ministry of Jesus. But Jesus still gave. And in fact, if we look through the Gospels, even the, the disciples of Jesus, quite frankly, are going to be a letdown to Jesus. It won't be just Judas that betrays Jesus. Yes, he does in the formal sense that he takes money for, for what he does. But all the disciples betray Jesus because they all run off and they leave him. Simon Peter lies three times that he knows Jesus. He completely denies it three times. And to a world that's full of sin and a world that rebels against the ways of God, God gives again and again and again and again. And I believe what Jesus is asking us to do in this passage is, is to live life in a way lightly, that everything that we have is a gift from God. Whether it's money, whether it's food, whether it's clothes, whether it's our homes, Everything is a gift from God. Even if we have the ability to work and we're blessed to have a job, the strength and the intellect that we have to do that job is a gift from God. And I believe Jesus is reminding us of that. And perhaps, you know, it's no coincidence that this, this reading is, is chosen for rogation, which is the time where people will gather and say, Lord, please bless this coming year. Bless the harvest that's to come. Protect us from disaster. Because people were more attached to the land and instinctively knew that if, if they didn't get the right weather, then they didn't get the right crop and everything depended upon the goodness of God. And we are a bit detached from that in our modern society. So I believe what Jesus is asking us to do is to begin to reflect him to those around us. Rather than seeking vengeance, forgive. Why? Because on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Rather than just serving ourselves, we're told in the Gospels that there are times where Jesus says to his disciples, come apart by yourselves, because the crowds are coming again and again and again. And even when when they go apart to, to have some space, it says the crowd, they, they discover where Jesus is and they follow him and they're outside. And Jesus doesn't say, go away, I can't be bothered, I'm tired. Jesus ministers to those who come to him. And again and again, we see in the Gospels this generosity, a generosity that gives, a generosity that forgives, a generosity that puts other people first, a generosity that, that leads Jesus to the cross. And I believe that's hinted in our reading from Luke's Gospel today, that when we think we've obeyed the rules and when we think we've done everything that God requires of us to do, actually, we're missing the point. What God is calling every single one of us to have is an open generous heart, a heart that doesn't cling on to things, and a heart that is willing to give. Yes, of course, we pray to God for wisdom, you know, because if we walk down the street and we gave all our money away, maybe that's not the wisest thing to do. But what Jesus is asking us to do is be prepared at any moment to serve him. Be prepared at any moment to serve others. And in serving, do it with an attitude of free will offering, not expecting to get anything back. And here's the thing. If we never expect to get anything back, anything that we do ever get back is a bonus. And if we give expecting never to get anything back, then we'll never be disappointed. And to do that, we need open, 
generous and free and liberated hearts. Actually, what we need to have is that example that we see in Jesus Christ in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, the um, challenge put before us by our Lord is to be open, generous, not to be grasping things, to freely give, not expect anything back. And in, in so doing, embody the Lord Jesus Christ to those who are around us, that we will meet this day, either on the internet or speaking to our neighbours or interacting with other people. Let's do it with that love and that grace that is at the heart of Almighty God. Let's pray. Lord, we ask for that generosity of spirit which comes from you. Grant us wisdom to serve those around us. Grant us the strength to be your disciples. And in everything that we say and that we do this day, may we reflect in the power of the Holy Spirit, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for clarifying that, um, Reverend Dave, because I th I've, um, I've seen people misinterpret that passage, particularly yeah. when they might be in an abusive relationship or, um, or something that's doing them harm and they feel like, oh, it's saying I need to put up with this. And you telling us not to be a doormat was quite enlightening. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not to let yourself be battered or abused or walked on or... Or, or, or whatever, it, it, but it's, it's it, what it's about having is that generosity of spirit. And I think um, it, it's hard for us to realise, but the society in which Jesus lived was a society in which religion dominated every facet of daily life. And there were some people who they 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 eased their conscience by thinking they they were obeying God's law. But they had a limited vision by saying, oh, I've obeyed this one, I've obeyed that one, I've obeyed that one. And sometimes the only thing or thought the law related to fellow Jews, and even then they didn't fully obey it. But um, Jesus is saying, actually, hey, this is about generosity, it's living in freedom. It's not about grasping, but also it's not about being walked over because Jesus certainly wasn't a doormat. No, no, not at all. And you also find that, um, the more generous you are, the more blessing you actually receive. You do. You do it in all kinds of ways. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it's less stressful because you're not having to grasp, grasp all the things. Mm -hmm. And um, I, think, I think the blessing comes because when, when we live in that kind of way, we, we connect with the heart of God. That's a really nice analogy, yeah. Shall we continue? With our liturgy. Yes. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where are death is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where are death is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We continue with the bold type as we come to the Song of Zechariah, the Benedictus, and the Barber will we'll continue with the rest of the text. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. We say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people he has redeemed. Heavenly Father, we just lay before you all those that are on our hearts, that we bring before you who we love, who we care for, who we might have anxieties or worries for, or we ask for you to intercede. Today we pray for all those who are sick, particularly those with the COVID virus. And we pray for Lynn's friend Doreen, who is sick in the hospital, and all those throughout the world who are sick. We pray for those who are caring for them. We pray for those who are looking to find a vaccine. Give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, and direction. We pray for all those who are worried as we return back to normal life with the reopening of services and businesses. Pray for anxieties to be lessened and your peace to be more. We pray for our leaders, particularly our local leaders, for discernment and wisdom. We pray for our communities that no one feels forgotten. And we ask for you to renew in us a hunger for you and for prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our collect for the day. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for praying with us. I think there's power when people pray together, don't they? Absolutely. Yes. Have a, have a wonderful day, folks. Yeah, have a really lovely day, and we'll see you tomorrow at nine. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Oh, my soul.
Yes, I worship your home. 